I see change on the horizon. I just do. Uh, Africa, Zambia, and especially Lusaka is at a point in time where we need to find solutions that are indigenously ours to problems that we face day to day. This is painfully obvious when you look around because uh, when we ha look at our state of evolution, our state of growth, our level of growth, we find that everything that other continents went through is not exactly the same direction we're going along. So following their pattern to a T does not solve our problems. This is specifically clear when we look at a city like Lusaka that has, uh, as you obviously know and found just today, a serious traffic problem. But this requires a bit of background. Who am I? What do I do? I'm an architect by profession, and uh, I became fascinated with design solutions and their ability to make life easier for the common man. You see, design solutions are not just about the shape of the Guggenheim. Design solutions do not just show how nature functions, but design solutions are exhibited right here in the way you are arranged in this hall for you to leave and arrive in the hall properly. Now, being born and raised in Lusaka, I spent uh, 2011 and 2012 on the Copper Belt, and for the first time in my life, first time, I had to defend Lusaka, which was, uh, it was a shock, because according to me, everyone loved Lusaka. What's not to love? It's, uh, it's pretty cool. But for the first time, I had to defend it, and everybody outside of Lusaka always talks about two things, traffic and congestion. You hear it in buses, you hear it in taxis, you hear it at the hospital. I'm sure you remember that line at ZRIA that you were hoping would end soon enough. You heard it there too. And Lusaka's traffic problem, unfortunately, is not going to go away at the touch of a button because it's a structural issue. Now, whenever you hear talk about traffic, it eventually gets down to bicycles, and luckily for you, I'm no different. So, this is Bob. Bob is my bicycle, not the dog. <laughs> and uh, I'm a huge fan of Bob and how Bob gets me from my home to my place of work when I'm trying to meet people and all of that. And Lusaka's traffic problem, okay, is solved in an ideal kind of society whereby people of all levels of life and whatever level of income are able to not only use public transport, but they can also bike to work, and walk to work. But first, let's look at what Lusaka's traffic problem is, because I'm just going on. All right, let's look at Lusaka. All right, this is Lusaka. Lusaka is basically this place that has grown from a town that should have held 200,000 people to a town that holds, city that holds over 2 million people. The area in green is mainly residential. There's some commercial property there, but it's mainly residential. The area in orange is, let's say, mixed. Residential and commercial, and the area in red is just painfully commercial. Now, what happens here is that Lusaka turns into a bottleneck with people from the green area trying to get to the orange and red areas every single morning for work and leaving in the evening to head back home the very definition of a bottleneck. And uh, it's just painful. I mean, just look at that. that. That just hurts me every time I think about it. Um, <laughs> but then the council, to their credit, are able to create solutions that in the short term can help. And these solutions, to some extent, have made things better. We'll just go through them so that you can appreciate what I'm talking about. The first one is more lanes. I'm sure you've seen these lanes are coming up everywhere. But the problem with lanes is that traffic isn't stopped by cars moving. It's stopped by cars stopping. So as long as there's a junction, doesn't matter how many lanes you have, 10, 15, 20, 3, 2, 1, as long as cars stop, you have a problem. Which brings us to our next best solution. Roundabouts. You know them in Lusaka, we like putting <laughs> birds there. Uh, 
I can't tell you how much it bothers me. <laughs> I, I cannot express how much it bothers me that when somebody comes to Lusaka for the first time, the first statue they see, <laughs> it's, it, it's not the first president, it's a chicken. <laughs> it's that chicken. It's just, it's ridiculous. But let me, not, let me not go too far with that. Roundabouts basically are a good solution in that they keep traffic flowing at all times. The problem is roundabouts do not prioritize based off of, well, priority. That means the direction that has five cars is going to exit at the same rate as the direction that has 25 to 30 cars. That doesn't exactly help our traffic situation. Which brings us to the next best solution that Lusaka has in place, traffic lights. Now, in theory, in countries that are slightly more developed than us, because we are pretty developed, if you know what I mean, Traffic lights are digital, they are computerized. In short, they measure traffic patterns to see who deserves priority at any one time. However, in Lusaka and Zambia as a whole, what we do is that we set them on timers, which means at any part of the day, they have a specific set of time that they give to a specific direction. The problem is traffic patterns change based off of occasions. But the traffic lights don't know that. So at the time of the showgrounds, when the showgrounds open, agriculture show in Lusaka, all of a sudden you're still following the same uh, timers that are set when, uh, on a Sunday when people are heading to church, which is, it just does not really add up. So traffic lights are okay, but in our context they don't really do it. Which brings me to the best possible solution that Lusaka has in place right now for its traffic problem. It's these guys. <laughs> Traffic police are by far Lusaka's best solution to its traffic problem. Now, granted, in this image, they are not doing their job, but I just, I just like the image. <laughs> so these guys are able to assimilate real-time information to tell who needs priority over who. However, you cannot negate human error. In short, uh, if the guy is incompetent, irritable, or is just in a bad mood for some reason, the entire system falls to the ground. And it's quite possible that they could be all three at any one time. <laughs> Traffic police, if you're here, I appreciate you. I love you. <laughs> you're the best. All right. Which brings us to the common solution that people have to Lusaka's traffic problem. You hear it everywhere, decentralization. <laughs> they make it sound like it's so easy. You see, their idea of decentralization is basically you have your current city center, that area in red and orange, and basically what you do is you find a part of Lusaka and you set up a separate city center over there. In short, now people are not heading in one direction, but they're heading in two, which in theory, again, could work, but the amount of money it would take to build that new city center would be crippling to Lusaka. Possibly even Zambia, crippling. Because it's not just about buildings. You have to set up services, service entryways, you have to pay the staff that will build it. And even if you managed to do all that, there's no guarantee that companies would actually move from their current location to the new one. Because it's a risk to move your company your current customers might not be able to find the new place. They might not want to go to the new place. Your employees might find it too far. You lose your credibility, you lose your business if you move. So that's not even a solution in itself. Uh, to some extent, Lusaka is solving its traffic problem by itself. To some extent, but here's the problem with this. Design is intelligent. It's an intelligent process. You don't just throw chips and expect them to fall down and things sort themselves out. So, whereas some companies are now moving into that orange-yellow zone, it doesn't really solve anything because they're still along what would be your lines of rail if we were in the 70s, 60s, and 50s. We still have an extreme selection of green area where there's nothing going on. No real commercial product. So, what is the solution? to Lusaka's traffic problem? Well, I'm glad you asked. 
what needs to happen is that we need to blur the line between commercial and residential property. That's it. Just blur the line. I feel like I can go now. <laughs> All right. Uh, just to explain that, basically what needs to happen is that we need to create commercial hubs in each of the communities as you leave the current city center going out. These commercial hubs in each community, not town, but community, these commercial hubs are going to have the services that I need. They'll have their health services, they'll have their financial services, people will find their insurance companies right there, accounting firms right there, IT firms right there, schools, clinics, you name it. They'll be all right there within the community in an area that would look a little bit like this. So you have this in the middle of the community, where people in the community are able to go for all of their issues. And the thing is, companies will see the benefit of moving their key personnel near the commercial hub. After all, their key personnel will now spend less time in traffic. They'll be more efficient at work. They will be less troublesome because of all these issues. Now, if you picture what, would, what, it, would, what it would look like if you dropped a droplet of ink onto a napkin. When it falls down, the center is it's, it's really concentrated. It's, it's dark. But as it goes out, it diffuses, and it gets lighter till you get to the white. And that's the solution with Lusaka's traffic problem. You see, the commercial hubs will get smaller as you move from your current city center heading out, which means that you leave your essential companies, your essential services, where they are currently, along Cairo Road and in the current city center. Moving your bigger firms right on the outskirts into the local communities that are there, and then the companies and the commercial hubs get smaller as you move out. People who work for small firms, small but profitable, will be able to live and work right near themselves. They could ride bicycles like Bob all the way to their workplace. They could walk to places like this. Now, what does this mean? It means that as we move outside of the city center, all of a sudden, Lusaka's growth will be even. Lusaka is very uneven at the moment, but its growth will be even because in each community, all they would have to do is they would get a single block, demolish it, and create your own commercial hub. And commercial hubs are organic. They grow. They build. Commercial hubs would be able to make each community look good. They would contribute to their communities because not only are they making them look good, they are bringing in income to their individual communities. And if you think about it, for a different experience, all someone would have to do is move over to the adjacent community. The Lusaka of the future could look a little bit like this. A place where a single commercial hub is able to be surrounded by green, be surrounded by homes where we can live and not feel any burden of traffic and hooting and buses and taxis. All of a sudden, we would live in a place where we can cycle to work. You would feel comfortable. There's no need to use up all that gas. Use the gas when you're going to the village to see your folks. <laughs> the Lusaka of the future would be a place where we are happier, healthier, if we set up these individual commercial hubs. And if you just think about it, maybe someday soon, you can join me and Leonardo DiCaprio riding a bike to work. <laughs> and granted, granted, granted you might not look as cool as he and I, but <laughs> I guarantee you that in time you'll get there. The Lusaka of the future will be better, it will be brighter, it will be more comfortable for us to live in. Thank you very much.